Hello lovely children, welcome to the English class. Today we are going to learn from unit number 8. It's found on page number 36 of your learning ladders textbook. Open your textbook to this page and we will start this unit. The title of this lesson is The World Must Know. Before we begin reading the lesson, let me ask you one question. Do you like watching TV? I bet you do. Can you imagine a world without television? It's difficult to do so, isn't it? Today in this unit, we are going to learn about Philo Farnsworth, who is the inventor of television. The man who made this historical invention and changed the course of the world. Let's look at the lesson. He sat on the chair outside his house, looking at the potato garden. Who is he? Philo Farnsworth. He is sitting outside his house looking at his potato garden. Blue jays made a racket near the feeding table. Blue jays are little birds. They were making a racket. To make a racket means to make a lot of noise. So there's a lot of noise outside the house and Philo Farnsworth is sitting there watching these birds. Occasionally they swoop down among the potato plants and gobbled up plump caterpillars. Swooping down means flying downwards. So these birds were flying downwards and gobbling up or eating up the plump, the juicy, thick caterpillars. But Philo Farnsworth was just too tired to enjoy the beauty of the things around him. He was broken in spirit. Looks like he was not in a mood to enjoy these beautiful sights, but he was very sad. Do you think I have acted like a fool, Pem? He asked his wife. His wife's name is Pem. He's asking her, do you think I made a mistake? What makes you think so? Pem asked. Thinking back in time, I don't know if I made the right decision. He took a sip of whiskey. Whiskey is the alcoholic drink that he is sipping on. Here's a picture of a sad man who seems to have a lot of regrets in his life. Let's look at what that is. No one can do anything about it now. Why don't you just forgive yourself? Pem said calmly. So the wife is advising him to not think about all those terrible things that he seems to be thinking about and asking him to forgive himself and to move on. She wants Philo to forget what happened. So what is it that happened that was so terrible that he is so depressed? Let's see. He remembered the days when he had hoped his discovery would be a great milestone in human history. The inventor of the electronic television. So he was the inventor of the electronic television and that was a great historic invention. And Philo Farnsworth was hoping to be making a mark in history. I don't think there is justice in this world, he said glumly. Glumly meaning sadly. There you go again, Pem shook her head sadly. So Pem is telling him, don't go over those painful memories. When he was a schoolboy of 14, while working in his father's farm, Philo got an idea. He was very excited. So this is the backdrop of this man's life. He grew up as a farmer's son. He was a bright student who was very interested in physics and he had a lot of interesting ideas. When some of those ideas were presented to his teachers, they encouraged him greatly. Young Philo took the idea forward and created a magic box where images were shown in continuity. Now that was something that was unheard of. People could only imagine a picture to be still and it would never move. Now he invented a concept where the pictures would move continually, just like we see videos now, just like you're seeing me on the screen. That was beyond anybody's imagination at that point in time. And it was a brilliant idea that Philo came up with. And he executed it so flawlessly that he made a magic box that would convert the images into a stream of electrons, which will then convert it back to images. So that's how the television works. And nobody had even heard of something like this and Philo was inventing that. 
It was so unique that he got it patented in the year 1927. Patent is a governmental license that an inventor would get for his invention so that others would not be able to copy his invention. So this is an exclusive right that an inventor would get to continue with his research on this particular idea that he has developed. So Philo got a patent for this invention that he had made in the year 1927. Word went around of the magic box with moving images. Soon the news spread. There is this wonderful invention a man called Philo Farnsworth has come up with and that is called the magic box. The president of RCA, a company that produced radios, David Sarnoff, also heard about the marvelous invention. This is a name that you will have to remember for the rest of this lesson. David Sarnoff, he was the president of the company called RCA or Radio Corporation of America. That was a huge company that almost had a monopoly in the market. Monopoly is when you crush competition and there is nobody who is accepted as good as you. So that is the company that David Sarnoff was heading and he heard about this. And you must understand in that time, people had only heard about radio. There was no concept of any image coming on a screen. There was no concept of videos or television at that time. And David Sarnoff was a very shrewd businessman. He was very clever and always looking for new ideas that would work in the market. And when he heard about this new invention Philo has come up with, he was very intrigued. He wanted to find out more about it. And what did he do? He sent his friend, another inventor from Russia called Vladimir Zwarikin to Philo. So Sarnoff's friend Vladimir Zwarikin went to California in America to meet Philo Farnsworth. And what happened in that meeting? Zwarikin was also curious to see for himself what he had heard so much about. Zwarikin also had heard so much about this new invention Philo had made. He himself was an inventor. He was also trying to make something like a television, but he had failed multiple times. He arrived in California and was welcomed by Farnsworth, who did not know the real purpose of the visit. When Zwarikin saw the invention, the way it worked, he was awestruck. He was overwhelmed by a sense of wonder when he saw what the invention looked like. He was so impressed. This is a beautiful tube. So there's a tube that is inside the magic box that is converting the images into a stream of electrons and then converting back into images that people can see. And these images would move continuously like in a video. I wish I had invented it, he told Farnsworth. And how did Farnsworth take it? He felt so pleased by these compliments. He was thinking that he was going places, that he would become so famous now. People are going to be appreciating him for this wonderful invention. That's what Farnsworth thought. He felt in his heart that a great many things waited for him. But he was too young and naive. Naive means not so clever. He was young and not so clever. And he told Zwarikin how exactly this whole thing worked. But Zwarikin was not there to appreciate him. He wanted to know how exactly this worked and wanted to go back to David Sarnoff and report to him whether this invention was any good. And as planned, Zwarikin went back to Sarnoff and told him that this is a magnificent idea. What did Sarnoff do? He flew to California to meet Philo and he told him, I am the president of RCA, I have a good deal for you. I would like to buy the patent of this invention that you have come up with. I will give you $100,000 for this patent. $100,000 was not a big money for such a historical invention. And Philo was very annoyed. Philo felt insulted that he would be paid so little for such a big invention. He wanted royalties instead. Royalties would be the cut or the percentage that you get out of selling a product. So Sarnoff wanted to mass produce or produce in great quantities this new invention called television sets, sell it to the people and make a lot of money. And Philo wanted to have a percentage of that money and not a lump sum amount, which was very low, $100,000. David Sarnoff, as we know, is a shrewd businessman. He's not going to be pleased with how Philo was treating him. He said, if you don't take the deal, I will think of other ways to make this happen. And he left. What did Philo do? He went to another company called Philco. 
this was another radio company, to help produce the television. They agreed to his terms provided that Farnsworth moved his lab to Philadelphia. But it never happened. So he tried some other deals work for him, but it did not happen. Farnsworth formed his own company and demonstrated live TV in Philadelphia in 1934. When the deals with other companies did not work out, he formed his own company and he had made plans to make television sets. At the same time, Sarnoff was not too pleased to hear about all these developments. He wanted to make television sets and sell. There was a dispute over the patent of the television that lasted for quite some time. So Sarnoff also wanted to make televisions, Philo wanted to make television, but the idea was patented. So there was a dispute. It was not easy for anybody to just come along and make television sets because this is a patented invention. But the dispute or the court case went on for some time. In that time, what did Farnsworth do? He tried a lot of things, but nothing really worked out. And he was very low on money and finally he went bankrupt. And that made him very sad and depressed and he took to alcohol. He became an alcoholic. At this time, Sarnov was working very hard to bring out the TV sets. And in 1939, he did bring out some TV sets, but the dispute was still going on. But fortunately for Philo, he won the dispute. He won the court case and the patent was exclusively Philo's. Farnsworth was truly happy that he had won the case. He made plans to get the television sets in production. Now he had no competition. Nobody could copy his invention. He had the patent. The dispute was over. The court ruling was in favor of him. So he was truly happy. Now he could go ahead with his production and make his dream come true. But life dealt a terrible blow in the form of World War II. The production was stalled. Stalled meaning stopped. World War II broke out in the year 1939 and went on till 1945. When the world is in war, people are not in a mood to buy anything for entertainment. They don't have the money, the economies are collapsing. It's a very bad time for business people, just like the pandemic. Needless to say, it was a terrible blow to Philo. He wanted to finally produce television sets and sell them. So World War delayed his dream project. The war ended in 1945 and Farnsworth was left with just two more years as the owner of the TV patent. The patent comes with a time limit and there were only two more years left for Philo to hold that patent after the world war ended. That wasn't much time for a bankrupt businessman to pick his business up. Eventually, Sarnoff and RCA pushed him aside and went into TV production, thereby presenting the American populace with television sets. Farnsworth's name was never even mentioned. The inventor was terribly disappointed. So this was the final blow to the inventor. The patent time was over. Sarnoff and RCA were huge enough to push him aside and come out with the television sets. People obviously were amazed and excited about this new invention and it sold off as hotcakes. But did Farnsworth get any due for his invention? No, he wasn't even mentioned. Forget about making any money. He did not even get the recognition for making this invention. You can imagine that would plunge anybody into great sadness or depression. Later, Farnsworth and his family moved to a farm in Utah. By then, he was in the clutches of depression. All my struggle was for nothing. I just lived to see my dreams taken away. Farnsworth sighed, wretched life. So he was greatly into depression and he moved from California and went to Utah and started a farm there. But was he doing anything to do with inventions or any research? No, he was spending the rest of his life in great sadness. Pem, his wife, always stood by him and encouraged him and tried to cheer him up every time he was sad. But it was all not so successful. On the night of July 20th, 1969, something amazing happened. The world witnessed a huge leap in the history of mankind. Man landed on the moon and the world saw it through the magic box. So something very historic happened. NASA was finally able to land man on the moon and something of that sort had not happened ever. And a lot of times 
they failed at it and finally it was so successful and that historic moment the whole world was able to witness through the television so fansworth and his wife sitting in his farm in a remote place in utah also witnessed that historic moment of man landing on the moon see now pem nudged her husband look at what you gave the world if there is justice in this world the truth behind the invention of this box will also come out pem was very excited Pam always had encouraging things to say to Fansworth. She told him his life's work was now worth it because of his persistence and his invention. What happened? The world was able to witness this giant leap mankind had made and that is to land on the moon. Everybody watched it on their television sets. Pam was confident that now that the world is appreciating his invention, they will eventually know who invented it. So she believed that Farnsworth's name will come out at some point because the truth has to come out and the world must know. Will I live to see that? Even so, what use? So Farnsworth was not ready to believe that the world will come to know of him as the inventor of the television. It doesn't matter whether we are there or not, but the truth will not be hidden anymore and the people who cheated you will hang their heads in shame. This is what Pem believed. She had hope for the future. She said, that even if they are not alive at some point the truth will still come out and people will know about Farnsworth and his work tears rolled down Farnsworth's face yes there was hope somewhere in the distant future so that momentarily comforted Farnsworth and he cried in hope if we look at history we learn that Farnsworth while he was alive was never recognized for his invention he passed away at the age of 64 and Pem for the rest of her life fought for recognition for her husband and she finally succeeded in that. Now Philo Farnsworth is recognized as one of the inventors of the television sets. Around the same time other inventors in other parts of the world were also working on this research and they also had come out with similar inventions. So he is considered as one of the inventors of television sets, an honor that he truly deserves. There are statues erected in his honor, there are awards after his name. Just as Pem always believed, the world finally recognized him. And when they did, Farnsworth was no more. What is your takeaway from this lesson? Yes, we learned about this great inventor called Philo Farnsworth who worked so hard on his historic invention called the television. We also saw how his life took a drastic turn when he got disappointed. Sometimes life won't turn out as we plan it, but that's okay. What decides your success or failure is your response to disappointment. When you are disappointed, how do you respond? Do you become sad and remain sad for the rest of your life? No, that is something that we can learn from Philo's life. He could have gotten over the disappointment and worked on something else or moved on with hope. And how did Pem respond to this? With hope. She never gave up. For the rest of our life, even after Farnsworth's death, she worked so that the truth will come out and it did. So that's something you can take away from this lesson, to never give up in spite of failures or disappointments. There's a section called word meanings here. There is a set of words and their meanings. Understand them, use them in your own sentences. You know how that works. The next one is learn words. Determine whether to add suffix or prefix to the given root words. Some root words are given here and you have to add a suffix or a prefix. A suffix is a set of letters that you add after the root word and prefix would be the set of letters that you add before the root word. Let's look at an example. The root word that is given here is like. Let's add a suffix and a prefix and see what we come up with. In the first one, likable, there is a suffix or a set of letters that are added after the root word. That is able. The root word is like and the suffix is able. Together we get the word likable. Likewise, if you add a prefix or a set of letters before the root word, we get another word. Here, the example given is dislike. So the prefix that is added to the root word like is dis. Can you think of another prefix that will go with the root word like? Unlike. So un would be the prefix to the root word like. Let's look at the exercise. The first one is home. Let's add a suffix or a prefix. Homeless. 
that would be a suffix homeless the suffix would be less and we get the word homeless number two charge what suffix or prefix you want to add here let's add a prefix re recharge that's right that's another word that we formed from the root word charge number three child let's add a suffix like so the word becomes childlike good the next one is tall let's add a suffix er taller that's right number five agree let's add a suffix called meant so then the word becomes agreement number six view we can add a prefix like pre so that we can make it preview number seven play let's add a suffix full so the word becomes playful number eight care we can add a suffix like less then it becomes careless well done moving on the next one determine whether suffixes or prefixes have been added to the following words copy the suffixes or prefixes on the blanks so we have to look at these words and see if there is any prefix or suffix that is added to a root word and then we have to write that in the blanks this is solved for you refer this in case you need help here the next section is comprehension we have a set of questions that are based on the passage once you read the passage properly and understand it you will be able to answer all those questions let's look at the grammar section in this unit we are learning about three types of past tense the first one is simple past tense it is used to express an action that happened in the past it is simply stating an action that is completed in the past example i ate the apple ate would be the simple past tense of the verb eat shalu cycled her way to school today cycled that would be simple past tense Simple past tense is also used to show the past habits of people. If something is a habitual action that happened in the past, in that case also we can use the simple past tense. Example, Rahul wrote beautiful poems. As a habit, he used to write poems. So you can use simple past tense to denote that. Rahul wrote beautiful poems. Rayu was kind to everyone. It was a habit for Rayu to be kind to everyone. And the sentence goes like Rayu was kind. It is simple past. There is an exercise that's based on it. Read the following sentences and fill in the blanks with the simple past tense forms of the given verbs. The verbs are given in the brackets and we have to fill in the blanks with the simple past tense of these verbs. Let's look at the first one. Sambit dash speak to me in a hushed voice. What is the simple past of speak? Spoke. Sambit spoke to me in a hushed voice. Number two, Jaya dash run the last lap with all her might. What is the simple past of run? Ran. Jaya ran the last lap with all her might. Number three, the dog dash sprint past its owner. Past tense of sprint would be sprinted. The dog sprinted past its owner. Number four, Rani dash wake up at seven o'clock in the morning. Rani woke up at seven o'clock in the morning looks like a habitual action in the past number five robert dash participate in local swimming competition and dash win the first prize the simple past tense of participate would be participated and that of win is won so robert participated in the local swimming competition and won the first prize number six elisa dash go to the market with her mother simple past of go would be went elisa went to the market with her mother number seven susan dash read a beautiful story before the class the simple past of read is read we pronounce it as read but the spelling is the same as read susan read a beautiful story before the class number eight the warrior dash fight bravely on the battlefield what is the simple past of fight fought the warrior fought bravely on the battlefield. Let's look at the next tense. Past continuous tense. 
It is used to denote an action that was going on at some time in the past. The past continuous tense is formed by verb plus ing preceded by was or were. Example, Raj was getting himself chocolates at the store. So past continuous tense is used when some action is going on in the past and it is always used with the verb with the ing and before the verb with ing you have to use was or were depending on whether the subject is singular or plural here raj raj is singular so we have to say raj was get is the verb you use ing form of get getting raj was getting himself chocolates at the store let's look at the exercise Rewrite the given sentences in their past continuous forms. Number one, the cat is eating biscuits. This is present continuous tense. We have to change it into past continuous. Past would be was. The cat was eating biscuits. Number two, the students sat quietly in the library. Sat is simple past. We have to turn it into past continuous, which is sitting the students is plural so we have to use were the students were sitting quietly in the library number three the cock crowed in the morning the cock was crowing in the morning number four vicky spoke fluently at the meeting vicky was speaking fluently at the meeting that's right Number five, the dogs ran after our car. The dogs were running after our car. Number six, the president delivered a speech at the seminar. The president was delivering a speech at the seminar. Number seven, the wind blew fiercely. The wind, singular, the wind was blowing fiercely. Number eight, the robbers broke into the bank with weapons. The robbers were breaking into the bank with weapons. So we just have to look at the subject, whether it's singular or plural, and then add the past verb, was or were, and then look at the main verb and add ing to it. All right, that's how we convert any sentence into past continuous. Let's look at the next tense, past perfect tense. That is used to denote an action that was completed at some point in the past, before something else happened. In the case of two actions that happened in the past, the first action that got completed would be said in a past perfect tense. Past perfect makes use of had plus past participle of the verb. Let's look at an example. I had done my homework before the mother returned from work. There are two actions in this sentence. One is I did my homework and the second one is mother returned from work which happened first before mother returned from work I finished my homework so the first action that got completed is my finishing the homework so that is why you have to use the past perfect tense it comes with had and then the past participle of the verb I had done my homework before mother returned from work so whichever action got completed first will be in the past perfect tense. When we arrived at the station, the train had already left. So what happened first? The train leaving happened first. That is where you use the past perfect tense. The train had already left. Read the following sentences and fill in the blanks with the given verbs in the past perfect forms. Number one, Mr. Bennett dash owned this house for 10 years before he sold it to me. So the first action here is owning this house. So that is where we have to use the past perfect tense. So it has to start with had. Mr. Bennett had. What is the past participle of own? Owned. Mr. Bennett had owned this house for 10 years before he sold it to me. Number two. He dash live in the USA before going to Japan. He had lived that's right number three hillary dash failed to take the exam last year hillary had always remember past perfect starts with had hillary had failed to take the exam last year number four 
do you know dash go to the library before coming here had gone would be the past perfect tense number five they dash be to jakarta before 2005 they had been to jakarta before 2005 the past participle of be would be been in this case number six i enjoyed the film because i dash read the book because i had read the book what is the spelling of read the same as read r e a d only that we pronounce it as read i enjoyed the film because i had read the book number 7 i dash visit my uncle when i was a kid i had visited my uncle when i was a kid number 8 the dog dash catch the thief before the police arrived the dog had caught the thief before the police arrived the next section is learn to communicate the first part is listening and speaking your teacher will read out this passage to you and you will have to answer the questions that are given there you could do it on your own also let's move on to the writing write down at least 10 lines about your favorite show on television how exciting i'm sure you have a favorite show that you love watching on tv write at least 10 sentences about that show all the best that brings us to the end of this unit it was great to know about the great invention of television and the man behind that invention we also learned three forms of past tense simple past tense past continuous and past perfect continue to practice all that we've learned and you will be an expert in no time see you later